Mm. Mm. Vish, did Australia win it or did England lose it? I think Australia won it, yeah. I, I, I don't think you can look at that, certainly how they bowled on that first day and how they wrapped it up on the on the final morning. I, can't, I don't think you can say that they didn't earn it. And then in the middle, scoring 400-odd and Travis Head hitting the, what was it, the third fastest Ashes, Ashes 100? Like, yeah, they've earned this. Um, but that's not to say that England didn't make quite a few mistakes. Um, I, would, I actually think the capitulation this morning was worse than the 147 all out. Not just because... It gave us, well, us as England fans, hope. But I think they did all, they did all the hard work. You make the mistakes, so you learn from the mistakes, and they didn't really learn from the mistakes. And it, it just, yeah, like it'd be interesting to see how they come back from this. And no doubt there'll be people calling for heads and this, that, and the other. But yeah, like I, you know, Jason, we were talking about it over there. That um, you know, once you've done that hard work, it's yeah. it's quite like dispiriting to, you know, obviously Milan and Root get out, but then. Everyone else is kind of like, they're probably in there thinking, cheers, boys. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? I think with the hard work they put in, as soon as we lost those early wickets this morning, it was a case of then shifting our ideas completely away from the possibility of winning the game. Mm. And then it was, we've got a bat for a day and three quarters to save this game, which is a horrible position to be in and is very hard to bat under those um, situations. So I think it just would have been a huge mental battle for the guys today. And, and like I said, I know that they're just a bit underprepped. And I think come through the second innings, we always react pretty well. I think as England general, white ball, red ball, we, we react really well to, to defeat. So I'm trying to be optimistic <laughs> again. But, you don't yeah. lose it, do you? You don't lose no, that optimism. No, 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 no. You, you can't, man. You can't. Because it'll come around quickly. Next week will come around very quickly. Mm, yeah. The lads will utilize this an, uh, extra day off um, very well. And, and go hard again on, on Tuesday or whenever they start their training again. But is, is it good to have an immediate chance to bounce back? Because obviously you want your bodies to rest up, but also you do want to get back out there and, and put away any negativity. Yeah, I guess you don't want too much time to sit there in your room and, and sit there over coaching yourself and over analyzing performances, especially like day one where we just everything just got nicked and got caught. It was, it was a tough day. And then coming back from that day one is, is very difficult. So I think... You, the quicker we can put this to bed, the better and move on. So, yeah, I think the game coming around quicker will do us um, a world of good, better than waiting and prolonging it. In that 2019 series, uh, we obviously lost first test mm. at Edgebaston. What was said in the dressing room after that? And, and do you think something similar is being said now? Uh, possibly. I, th I think Edgebaston was, was obviously quite disappointing because like they do with Brisbane, we do that with, with mm -hmm. Edgebaston, Fortress, Edgebaston and all that sort of stuff. But um, they played extremely well there. Um, and, and yeah, I, I guess you have to, you have to just put it to bed as soon as possible. Uh, I don't think there's any point in dwelling on it at all, especially with four more games coming up. I mean, if it was the end of the series and you can have a long chat about it and have a few beers and, and kind of pull everything apart, but not with four games to go, you have to stay upbeat, stay confident, train hard, um, and, and mentally prepared. I think playing in front of a huge crowd again, mate, they haven't played in so long. Uh, the batters haven't played in situations where they're in that sort of pressure in front of a crowd for a long, long time. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's four games to go. It's a long way. Yeah. On the flip side, Steen, the media is now all going to be behind Australia in Australia. Uh, the players are going to feel like they're in great form. I'm sure when you return to village cricket, you're now going to feel like you're in great form just by osmosis. Uh, do, how important is that kind of total attitude that national feeling of momentum going to be oh it's it's huge and also the confidence going into the adelaide tests as well and the day night tests haven't gone the full five days as well so mm. i think we're going to see a lot of wickets early a lot of runs uh it's going to be exciting and if we can take a two nil lead it's going to be very very difficult for england to come back do you remember there was a stage when australia were seen as like in disarray there were questions about the coach there were questions about you know captaincy it wasn't or long ago yeah exactly ago. and then in the last couple of months they've won the t20 world cup and you know they're taking a one little lead in this ashes series even when australia are down they're never really down are they I, a funny i'm game. not going to say i gave him a bit of a pep talk um during the world cup and that has led to because it just didn't happen that's what i'm not going to say um, <laughs> it would be a lie wouldn't it yeah it would definitely yeah, be a lie. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say anything because it's not true. 